Hello, Zach Attack here. Let's talk about making Tick80 a bit nicer for coding. So by default, if you run Tick80, this is what you see. It gives you the command prompt and you can type surf and either go to tick80.com to play some other people's games or go to one of your own files. I'm just going to use this example I found online and then, you know, play your game. But now you notice a bug. I don't know, something is wrong on screen and you quickly want to go check in code. Why did it do that? You press escape and you get this very nice menu. It allows you to reset the game and go again, close the game to go back to the console, quit Tick80 entirely. But what it doesn't allow you to do is get to your code quickly. You can close the game and then press escape or F1 to get to your code, which works. But if you're rapidly popping to a game and wanting to edit a thing and having to do this every time, it gets a little annoying. So, in this options menu, there's a setting called dev mode. Turn that on. You see there's a message down here that says the, g the game menu is disabled in dev mode. It's not entirely disabled. I'll show you how to get to it. But what it means is that it's not active by default. And the change is immediate. If I press escape now, it just boots me back to the console. Or if I had the code editor open and I was running my game, and I hit escape, go straight back to my code. And if my cursor was in the middle of the file somewhere, say I was at magic fluid one, I run my game, I test what I need to game, press escape, cursor is still sitting exactly where I left it. So if I'm rapidly developing and checking things or debugging a feature, this is a lot quicker to pop back and forth between your code and the running game. A couple of other things that I find useful. This text that we're looking at here, it looks nice and retro and it's pretty and everything, but it's not very practical if you're trying to read a whole bunch of code. So up here, you'll see there's a button that says switch font, a little F there. If you click on that, Tick80 switches to an alternate font that's a little narrower and fits more text on screen. I personally actually find this easier to read. And when you're using the print command in Tick80, you can tell it to print using this alt font as well in your games. The next button over, is the shadow. You'll see the text, especially on the gray, you can see it quite clearly that there's a shadow behind the text that makes it pop off screen. If you click that little shadow there, it goes away. I find this much cleaner and easier to read. I have discovered, however, that with the shadow on, this text reads a lot better on YouTube, so I might leave it on in my videos, but you can decide which you prefer. Do you prefer the text to sort of stand off the screen or look a bit more like a plain text editor. Do you want to have the funky retro font or do you want to have a slightly narrower, more concise font that allows long if statements like this to not fall off the screen quite as quickly? This is a very long if statement, actually. This isn't my game. It's an example that I found online. Um, it's this person's game. But now the problem is these settings are not permanent. If I quit Tick80 and come back, this will revert to its default look. So how do I make those settings permanent? When you go back to your console and you type the command, if I can type, config, it'll inform you that your config cartridge has been loaded. See there, config.tick. Going to the code editor now, either with escape or with F1, gives you this. Now it looks intimidating, there's a lot of stuff going on here, but you can ignore most of it. The four things we're looking for are these. This shadow is true. That's because when it started up, the shadow is turned on. If you make this false, when you start up tick 80, the shadow will be disabled. So like this. Alt font is false, meaning it shows the normal tick 80 font. If you set this to true, then it'll start up with the alternate font. I'm just switching it myself now for demonstration purposes. Match delimiters and auto delimiters are quality of life things that code editors often have. If I select a brace uh, like this one, it highlights the matching brace so that I can see, okay, the gamepad object table thing opens here, it closes there. Touch opens here, closes there. So it makes it much easier for you to figure out. So theme opens there and it closes all the way down there. So this is the end of theme. It makes it much easier for you to see where the delimiters, the brackets or the, the parentheses things match. 
auto delimiters, which I like to turn on, what that does is when you open a new brace, it puts the closing brace next to it so that you can type in between. It also does this for parentheses. So if you're writing a function, I need to be careful to not break my config file now. If you're writing a function declaration function, name of thing, and I make my open brace, the open parentheses, the close parentheses is there, but I can still go add my variables, my parameters that I want to pass to my function. You will, however, still need to remember to put your end at the end of your function declaration and your conditionals and so on. It won't do that for you, but it at least matches your braces and brackets and I think quotes, I'm don't quote me on that one. <laughs> so, shadow, yes or no. Alternate font, the narrower one, yes or no. Match delimiters when you click on them, Yes or no. This doesn't change anything. It's just a visual thing. And in auto delimiters, adding a new closing parenthesis to the end of the open parenthesis when you type it, yes or no. Change those four settings to what you like and then either control pre press control S or type save into the console. It'll tell you that your config cartridge has been saved. And next time you load up TIG80, the settings that you have defined will be those settings. You can still change it if you want. But now if you quit tick 80 and load it up, it'll revert to your settings as opposed to the default settings. Now you'll notice there's a number in the file path. Yours might be in a different spot. This is in my local config. There's that number is also the build number for this version of tick 80. Because when tick 80 updates, it ships with a new config file because sometimes they change things or add things and one config file might not work on a future version. So if you're going to make massive changes to the config, I suggest keeping a backup of it. Open this folder and save the file somewhere safe. But in most cases, if the only thing you're changing is these four options, if tick 80 updates and you notice that your settings have reverted, just go into here, change them quickly again, save the cartridge. If for any reason you accidentally break it and it doesn't want to load, you'll get a big red warning that says fail to load config and it'll go back to default. Type in config followed by the word reset. It'll inform you configuration reset and the values in here will be back to their defaults. It won't kick in immediately because the file is only loaded on start. But then once you've re reset it to the standard config, you still need to save it to make that your config file. So keep that in mind. And then last but not least, I know we've disabled the menu and if you're running your... Uh, this isn't my game. Oh right, I ran the reset, so dev mode also reset. Oops. <laughs> running your game and you press escape, how, how do you get to your menu? Well that's simple. In the console, you just type the word menu and your menu pops up as normal. Even though you went to console to go type this, if you say resume game, it will still resume whatever cartridge was loaded. Menu. Ah. Menu. Resume game. Drops you right back into the game. So the menu st is still accessible and you can still get to all the options. All we've changed is we've prioritized going back to code rather than going back to the menu when you press escape or the start button on your controller. So hopefully this will make your life a little bit smoother for coding your own games and I hope you have fun.